All right, welcome back, fans and friends. For this episode, we have Hot Wheels Car Culture Team Transport Series, FLF number 56, although in the overall series it is number 35 from Mattel. The truck is the Aerolift, and the vehicle is the Volkswagen IDR. And as you can see there, it looks really nice and shiny on its flatbed carrier. And I must admit, I do prefer actually this uh, arrow lift over the carry-on. Uh, some of you remember from my last video, actually the most popular video I've done so far, the issues I have with this, resting on that, is that. It just does not want to stay on. But anyway, I'll get to that later. I'll just leave you up there. And as you can see here, the set is the Volkswagen ID is number there, 36 and then 37. I, in fact, also have this and it'll be coming up soon. We're just going to go through the usual things. Ages 3 Plus, Hot Wheels Premium, the train, Team Transport, uh, Hot Wheels Car Culture Series. And for the usual stuff, we have 2020, Hot Wheels Collector. Uh, we have all the sponsors, oil companies, and provider of tires and brakes. You can see their Castro, Michelin, G-Ready, Bilstein. And then over here, we have VP Fuels, Valvoline. Volkswagen GM, uh, Argent Republic Argentina, and the website, as well as Bridgestone up here, and this Mattel empowering the next generation through play. And it's not for use with Hot Wheels sets, so I guess it's because it's including the truck and the car, and they don't say which one or either, just don't do it in general. And you have paper for recycling and plastic for recycling and the usual other things. And as there you can see the FLF. I believe when I cashed it out at Walmart, it was Fleet Flyer, so I don't know if that's related to FLF, but anyway, that's not really important. I'm just going to go ahead with this and open it. I actually have yet to buy the uh, any of green lights. Hitch and Toe series, which I guess is the rough equivalent to this. It's priced about the same, actually. The price for these went up. I did not pay as much for that Chevy Corvette as I did for this, even though they are in the same series. I guess the price of life is going up. Just have to deal with it. Okay, so I will deal with the truck first, and we will get to the... And it seems to be wedged in there. Uh, you guys can see that. Uh, I guess it's growing pains. But anyway, I will do the truck first. And as you can see, it's very plainly painted. Uh, it is rather basic, just the blue there, the two lights. The bed does not move whatsoever. And you have the normal Hot Wheels rolling. They both do it very well. And from the front, you have the two plastic stamped on wipers on the windshield, the R again. And you have the lights there, no other insignias or anything else. The forward grill of the truck, and as usual, this is a Hot Wheels product. It is not licensed from any company, although it might bear similarities, maybe to avoid licensing. But anyway, and on the bottom, I don't know if you guys can clearly see that, but it just says there, Aero Lift, FYT10. And Aero Lift is trademarked, so I guess it is their product. As 2018, obviously reused because these vehicles are very basic. There's no point in engineering. Oh, I got the bed to move, so I'll deal with that after. And you see the usual stuff made in Thailand. 1186. So apparently, oh, it might. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Ah, uh, there you go. That does make sense. Although, to be fair, I think it's just the wings here. Slide in. And literally hold the car in place very loosely. That makes sense. So technically this is its own playset, which I don't believe is entirely possible with this. No, not at all. I would have preferred. Had this come with this. At least it doesn't fall off, right? But I guess you get what you get. Okay, so other than that, that's the 
transport called the arrow lift and in fact I think that's really well done and I'm actually happy to say that the Toyota Super comes with this vehicle as well rather than this thing which is barely functional it's an original capacity so we're just gonna take a look at the IDR which is an all-electric vehicle from Volkswagen apparently after the scandal they decided to show what they can do and we're just going to start with the top and you can see there it has the same basic issues as the Corvette over there where it looks like it's very poorly printed on you can read it ID Volkswagen but you see how fuzzy it gets over there same on the other side it gets really fuzzy the ID Volkswagen is really easy to read but then the just electric gets really fuzzy I, I don't know what to say there you have Bridgestone you have ANSYS uh, spoiler it's not very rigidly mounted on there but anyway you have and assistant bridgestone as well you have the r uh, you have the cast roll which once again is very fuzzy printed fuzzily printed on there the volkswagen id volkswagen just electric and it's also rather i don't know what to say like some like half of it's done really well and then the other half is just not like this is done really well this is done really well and then here Anytime they have to print an ID Volkswagen, it just seems it's really poorly painted around. Then you have here the front. You can see the center cockpit. They can barely make out the steering wheel under that, but oh, there's a little bit of play here with the cabin. You can see right there. I don't know if it opens. I don't really want. Oh, it does open. I don't know if it's meant to, but uh, here we are. It does come out a little bit. And the underside is the usual stuff, Volkswagen IDR GJP92, 2019 Mattel, so a year after the product itself. Yeah, it says 2020 on there, and a year after its carrier. Uh, you can see there, very minimalist detail, uh, even going towards the rear of the car. But I guess it's all electric, so it doesn't need any of the complex emissions technology that, you know, even that doesn't have any much, very much, so I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. I do find it kind of unusual, though, that they print their... how reflective that underside is compared to this one here. But anyway, that's the IDR. Overall, I say it's really well done, and as usual, it rolls very well, as all Hot Wheels do. Although, as you can see from how low it's going to be, uh, it's probably not ideal for racing with the sets. Plus, it's a little wider here. Uh, I understand that it's made for racing, so that's why it has all the front splitter there, the side ones, and then the spoiler as well. However, in Hot Wheels' case, I don't believe it should be moving that much or this I'm afraid it might come apart but anyway otherwise than that and just the painting it seems to me it's done okay not perfectly but passable like I said it is legible so it's got that for going for it and the bridge down the ANSYS and all that stuff in the front is painted very well but otherwise there's just appeared maybe it's just this one some play there and play there which otherwise than that I mean I don't believe there is a socket I think it just fits in really tightly and then yeah it gets stuck and then falls out so just keep that in mind if you decide to get one it sits very easily where it's supposed to sit and it looks very nice all together uh, but I'd say very well done so this has been Tomlis from Toronto. Thank you guys for watching and till the next one.